Akash, welcome to CTS College and welcome to our interview. Thank you. You're on the next side of the table now in terms of we will be interviewing you today, right? It's so weird. It's yeah. so weird. This is what you all go through all the time from us? Yes, of I, course we I, do. I apologize. I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, don't be. Uh, congratulations. You've recently completed your MBA at CTS College, right? Very proud moment in my life. Wonderful. And congratulations once again to you. And of course, to your family, who I am sure would have supported you. Right? They paid for it, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> supported me in a big way. All right. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, even before we get into to questions about the MBA and your experience at CTS with the MBA, tell me this. I know prior to, to even looking at the MBA program or looking at a potential provider, uh, one of your colleagues would have referred you to CTS College and you would have thought about doing this MBA program, right? Um, tell me, at that time, what were you thinking? Why were you thinking about doing an MBA program? I had um, I had reached a stage in my career mm -hmm. where ability alone couldn't cut it. I was maturing in the industry mm -hmm. and I needed to um, balance the how I do things with the why I do things. And I was starting to be in meetings uh, management level, leadership level, mentorship level, where I was not understanding the language. So here I was with the ability to get it done. Right. But there's another side of things now where uh, a more mature role was beckoning, mm -hmm. uh, more mature positions within the company. And I, um, I felt a little out of my depth. Yeah. I, um, I, and I, I felt the first time I started to feel okay. Mm -hmm. this level of academics is missing now and I need to get myself prepared for that next step nobody I didn't have any divine right to it because yeah. I was you know I, I could have done what, what I did in terms of media in terms of reporting and I'm very proud of the reports I am but I felt like okay approaching mid 30 you know 33 yeah at the time I started I was yeah, I just turned 33. Yeah. And I said, okay, it is really time to start to understand that industry language. It's time to understand what leadership is. And it's time to take yourself professionally and personally to that next level. And when I looked at CT as his model, mm -hmm. it allowed me the flexibility because I have a very, very, very demanding job. Not yeah. to say other people don't have demanding jobs within who, you know, my classmates and whatnot. Yeah. But something about journalism, you can't you, you don't often get time to switch off and focus on yourself. Right. Right? You're so studying everyone else's problems, flood, process, they didn't get paid for, you know, two, three months. You bring home everyone's concerns and worries. Mm -hmm. And by the time you finish with them, it's the end of the day. Yeah. You didn't have time for yourself. And I said, okay, let's sacrifice that here. Uh, let us focus on some personal development because you need it. Yeah, you know to, to continue to be an asset to the industry uh, and an asset to Trinidad and Tobago. I needed to take myself to, the, that, to that next level. level. Before entering into the MBA program, you had no academic qualifications, right? I hated school, mm -hmm. so I went straight from um, secondary school finishing A levels experimented a bit with um tertiary level mm -hmm. realized I, I wanted to, i felt at that time i just i wanted to work i felt i wanted a new you know adventures uh financial independence yeah and i just immersed myself in journalism and i gave it everything and in a, in a sense it paid off but there comes a time when this glass ceiling approaches and you feel it on your forehead and you realize yeah Yeah, it was a big help. I mean, you all were very accommodating, mm -hmm. surprisingly uh, accommodating, not surprising, but in a bad way. But, uh, you know, you, you tend to associate tertiary level, especially administrative staff with um, just, you know, a conveyor belt of churning out applications. And right. You always hear of the frustration in other institutions. Mm -hmm. I need everything approved. I'm still waiting for this, still waiting for that. But every, everything ran so smoothly in terms of the application process, process. Mm -hmm. and a big thing for me was that um, you all had uh, quite a few intake periods throughout the year mm -hmm. so it went from me not having that long of a time to feel dissuaded or, or come up with excuses about why not to. Yeah. so uh, a friend of mine he went to the orientation in november yes 
I was in Curacao at the time. He said, mm -hmm. I'm listening, I'm going to this for both of us. So I'm going to email you all the material. Mm -hmm. And my wife saw it and she said, you need to start now. Ah. And uh, by December, mm -hmm. I enrolled. Uh, by January, I had my first class. Yeah. And it was one of the best things ever knowing that. I was so happy. So when March came around, I said, I'm so happy I didn't wait till March. Mm -hmm. When April came around, I was like, I'm so happy I didn't wait for April. Exactly. Because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm halfway there. Yeah. Or I'm on my way to half. We half. We mark now. So yeah, it, it was a, a huge encouragement given the model of the program. Mm -hmm. It really, it really is built for people who are trying to balance that career without sacrificing too much yeah. and that professional enhancement and development. What was it that attracted you and benefited you? I was scared because I. I never did a business class ever. Right. Um, in secondary school, was sciences. Um, in A levels, I focused heavily on modern studies, the literature, the Spanish, mm -hmm. the history. I never saw myself in a business class, and I thought maybe I didn't have the brain for it. Mm -hmm. So here I was doing an MBA. Mm -hmm. um, it was very. I thought it was very business oriented. So I thought I would have been uh, at a loss. Um, but what really struck me is after that first class. I immediately felt better about myself. Mm -hmm. I felt the imposter syndrome kind of leaving my body. Mm -hmm. I started to walk around with a more confidence. And, that's, and a big part of that had to do with the fact that I never felt alone. Um, be it with Jimmy, Arnold, Corey, Barry. These are some electrons. Yeah, yeah, I never felt like I was alone and by myself. And there were times I would have been a little confused and I would have needed some extra help that I didn't, you know, that, that the classroom itself couldn't um, address. Mm -hmm. um, it's impossible to, you know, learn everything, in, you know, in the classroom. A lot of it is the learning that you have to do. A big part of it mm -hmm. is the learning you do on your own. Yeah. Because, you know, the class, we meet not once a week to really discuss what we learn, I think, right. during the week. Yeah. And um, the lecturers were always accessible in a way that it wasn't just emails i could have I, i'm writing something i'm, I'm lost i said mm, lecture address this weekend you know but i forgot how they said to apply it mm -hmm. and i would just shoot them a, a, a whatsapp message so this is outside a class outside a class like right? um yeah. sometimes in the night 8 p.m mm -hmm. eight to five mm -hmm. i will get a message saying yeah, you're on the right track right. but consider this yeah or hold up uh give me a call mm -hmm. which is only the scary part <laughs> say, give, give me a call but you're happy to get I sometimes would be in work and I would just run into a quiet room to make that call because here I have now the lecturer. Actually, Basically, I feel like you're sitting with me yeah. and you're looking over my work with me and I felt so comfortable. So that is to me, that was like the biggest, um, the biggest quality of this school that, that really made me feel comfortable and felt like I'm not going to fail a thing. Okay. I have no business knowledge, yeah. but I am not going to fail a thing because I felt like the lecturer was there with me. And this is no, honestly, this is no mama guy thing. I really felt, and it was not like a Samru thing either. Right. Because I had people, I know I would talk to or people in class and experience. they would have that same, yeah, that same luxury yeah. and that same privilege to yeah. message and get feedback. And I honestly felt like some, like, like you all guided me. Right. Not spoon fed, mm -hmm. but guided me and motivated me and put me on the right direction at, at key moments that really helped me, you know, made that year really fulfilling and with very little disappointment, if any at all. So I'm happy to hear that. So kudos to uh, Jimmy, Arnold, Barry, and all the lecturers in the MBA team. Could you share how this MBA may have changed your perspective on your profession? Uh, definitely, my. So it affected my journalism from day one mm -hmm. because one of the things, one of the skills you develop uh, is the ability to do research, but not just surface research, but in-depth research. Yeah. And I felt like that in-depth research started to apply to my, my work now. Mm -hmm. So instead of taking things anecdotally, yeah. uh, instead of relying on charisma mostly, I had hard data now yeah. to back up my story. So when I go to change agents and I go to people, who have the legislative power and, and, and the willpower to do things, mm -hmm. I would go to them with not just anecdotes and people's interviews and experiences anymore, mm -hmm. but had facts and data. So my journalism became more data driven. Mm -hmm. My, for some reason, the MBA from again, day one, unlocked a, a, a folder in my head of critical thinking. 
Yeah. And it took my critical thinking to a higher level where my questions became even more critical. And I would listen to myself ask questions and said, I should have never asked that question that way a year ago or a week ago or a month ago. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would be impressed. Like, That's a good question. Thank God he went back to school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but other than that, and I think it's very important people know this, you look at an MBA thing business, mm -hmm. you look at the MBA specialties and you say, oh, it's very business oriented. Correct. It teaches you a lot more about leadership. Mm -hmm. I think my biggest takeaway from the year was the leadership skills I developed. Yeah. So if you're really looking to take yourself, you know, in, in a management position, if you're looking to move up in a company, in an industry, if you're looking to go out on your own, mm -hmm. I would say it helped me a lot with understanding what leadership is, the benefits of good leadership and what good leadership looks like. And I took that with me into journalism as well, because I am at an age where younger, there are younger people in the newsroom now mm -hmm. and they come to me for guidance. Um, which I'm very, you know, privileged. I'm very happy about that. And I, so you're actually mentoring now? I try to as much as possible because what's the point of having that information if you're not sharing, right? Yeah. Um, because I'm, I am where I am too from people who would have shared certain things as well. Yeah. Right. So, and the MBA gave me the language to not just explain to them, and I mentioned it earlier, how I do what I do, but why I do what I do. And it allowed me to pass on those lessons and messages and little tricks and hints mm -hmm. um, in a more coherent way, in, in, a, in a much more applicable, relatable, analogous way. And I did not think it was going to make me a better journalist. Huh? Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to give me options outside of journalism. Ah. So I said, okay, everybody knows Akka Sam Rudy reporter. Yeah. But this is going to be like a Samurai businessman. This is going to be like a Samurai the business head. Yeah. And I could do that as well. But it, I was so surprised when I saw, I'm looking at my stories and I said, but this is well written. This, you're connecting your points. You're finding more synthesis in your stories. And synthesis is something we learned a lot in the MBA program. And critical thinking. Yeah. And I'm like, and you're making all of this work. And I was so pleased mm -hmm. that it translated into my daily job yeah so i didn't feel like i was doing journalism and school on this side i felt like everything was just a part of this great experience i was on so you're able to, to think and work at a strategic level mm -hmm, more or less. Mm -hmm. and you i know I'm, I'm doing interviews with businessmen mm -hmm. heads of business chambers and i'm using language i learned in the mba so i would bring up corporate governance i'll bring up esg csr mm -hmm. and you would hear them pause and think Okay, so he knows what he is talking about. Let me know. Let me take, you know, make sure that my answers, you know, are, are, are up there because yeah. he clearly knows what he is talking about. What advice would you give to anyone considering doing an MBA program, first of all? I would say that it is going to be a difficult year in the sense of it requires sacrifice financial mm -hmm. and of your time your personal time you're going to find yourself working for the entire day for those who do work mm -hmm. and you're going to come home and it's, it's a job waiting for you at home right. however it is for a while it's just for a time mm -hmm. it's for a year the classes are flexible they are online mm -hmm. um, it allows you to have that full day work and come home and give yourself give all of yourself to to the classroom as well the most important thing and what kept me going, so there would be 2 a.m. mornings yeah. where you are tired, your eyes cannot make again. And this is where you're I would for your slouch. Assignments. Yeah, I would yeah. slouch over the computer and I'm like, if like you know, those those frustrated musicians yeah. with a keyboard yeah. Yeah. and I have my head and I just hit on each letter because <laughs> I want to get a certain amount of work done by tonight because deadlines yeah. are coming. Yeah. But what really kept me going is knowing that this was an investment in me. And I think a lot of times we invest heavily in our companies and careers and things, which is fine. I mean, you need to really, when you want to stand out in your workplace, you mm -hmm. need to work hard. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of times we, we, we put ourselves second and um, doing this MBA was telling myself it's time to put yourself first a little bit mm -hmm. and do something for yourself. So it's going to be difficult. It is going to pay off. It, it's going to get you honestly it's going to put you in that position to get that job you want yeah 
it helps for those who suffer with imposter syndrome like me where you always figure you're not good enough yeah. I don't belong here what am I doing in here you know this, this is not my you know my strong points whatever it's going to help you with that it's going to give you that confidence I tell you after the first class mm -hmm. I was walking around the newsroom with my head high strutting my chest out I am strutting <laughs> because I just learned about something that yeah. I understand now what's happening in those meetings that you know before yeah. I would have been lost in there like a little boy and I felt like a man now <laughs> in my in my workplace mm -hmm. and just do it because you're going to tell yourself I'll start in mid-year mm. I don't mid-year come you'd realize had I started in January I'd have been halfway there yeah. I would have been almost done so I'm not downplaying that it's just a, it's something that it's just going to happen and it's easy and it's it's not easy yeah, but the said benefits mm -hmm. that you get from it during and after are definitely worth the effort. I can't think of a better investment I've made in myself since becoming an adult yeah. than doing this program because there is a, a peace of mind that I have now mm -hmm. and a confidence that I have now that I never had before. And I always told myself, a confident Akara Samaru is that going to be a very dangerous Aka Samaru in a good way? In a good way. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. And that's such a very powerful statement. And it's fulfilling for us as educators to not only produce a certificate at the end of it, but to know that our students are able to go out into the workplace or in their careers and apply what they learn. Yeah. I know something. I told myself, so some of those nights where uh, I was struggling to stay awake, mm -hmm. I would tell my wife, see when next year I reach. I'm not reading our next book again. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done with school. I'm not looking at. I'm not doing anything with school again. I'm done. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. And when I'm finished, I'm thinking, well, what else? Yeah. What else can I do now? Now I want more. Yeah. And I think anybody doing this program, once they they, they have the time to set aside to do something else, they're gonna to want to do something, something else. Because like I went immediately on my LinkedIn after I was confirmed with the MBA yeah. to update my you know put the MBA there, and I'm looking at it. I updated my resume, I paid somebody to do a fancy one, I'm looking at it and I'm seeing under the MBA, I think, have some space in it. Yeah. Have some yeah, space, yeah. have, some, space, have some real estate here yeah. to put a little something and you all offer a lot, in, not just an MBA, do. but you yeah. know, degrees, certificates, diplomas. Correct. And I was like, maybe a little something in film editing now might look, oh, might look good under here. Yeah. So, yeah. I can speak to people maybe within um, where I am right now in life. Yeah. Um, early to mid, well, approaching mid thirties, mm -hmm. um, mid career, mm -hmm. and you're looking for that transition. You're looking, yeah, that junction now where you need to decide what you're going to do. Am I going to stay within, you know, what I've been doing in my twenties? Am I going to stay here? Am I looking for something else? Am I looking to be more uh, at where I am? Mm -hmm. And I think what CTS, what what really made it a no brainer for me mm -hmm. was that ability to you have to sac you're gonna have to make sacrifices here and there but i had to sacrifice mm -hmm. a lot yeah. i was able to give cts my all because of the the, the structure mm -hmm. um classes on weekends um the online setting so i was able some days i was working and listening yeah to what's happening in the classroom um at big people we have emergencies mm -hmm. we have families we have spouses um, things happen and sometimes you won't be able to make it to that class but you, you don't feel lost because when you get home mm -hmm. that class is waiting there for you to watch over to go through even if you were in the class you know sometimes it's going a mile a minute sometimes because you're trying to fit in a lot of material within a once a week class and you will tell yourself I have a second bite at this apple later in the day when you all send the recording yeah. I could sit down now and go back to this part here which I didn't really fully understand at the, at the time because a lot may be happening around me or I myself maybe needed to hear it a couple more times and you play that a hundred times, two hundred times and you, you get there So, but you think CTS was able to bridge that gap between that inexperience you had at the end with academics? Definitely, I felt, I did not feel like I was not in a classroom for mm -hmm. 14 years yeah. I didn't feel like, I, 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 I thought it was going to be like that mm -hmm. I thought I was going to be uh, around people who would make me feel for the one of better older done see at times yeah. I, I thought that was going to be my experience but I was contributing from, from the first class yeah. I was presenting on behalf of groups 
for people who were in management positions mm-hmm. in a business field and here I was leading the team because the information came across so it was so applicable to, to real world mm-hmm. and, and real life things that when you as I said you understand the why things happening so we're talking about big businesses in Trinidad we're talking about KFC's business model and you're like I know a lot about KFC but now I could understand why 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 certain things happen I know a lot about this now I understand why so everything about it was set up in such a way where the only way I think you're gonna really fail this or, or, or not succeed at this is really if, if, if you decide not to you know if you tell yourself you're gonna pass and you tell yourself I'm gonna sit here during this classroom and I'm gonna learn it have no way have no way you're not going you're, you're not, not going to come out of this with your with your qualification be it the certificate be it the MBA mm-hmm. maybe one day you do PhD that yeah maybe we could we could talk about some yeah. of that but just um, summer like that yeah but it it was really designed in a way where anyone no matter your field mm-hmm. be it journalism be it science whatever you could have been out of school for so long and you know people would have brought up that you know in our first class we'll put the caveat out there sir your ex- lower expectations from me yeah. I've not done business I've never done business I've never been in a tertiary level education classroom mm-hmm. and while you are very well aware that you are in a very professional setting it is not no jokey university there's not no jokey work you felt that it was doable because of the avenues you had to sit and understand be it the, uh, the availability of lecturers after the class mm-hmm. to talk to you be it the ability to pull back up that classroom and look through it and take your time and pause and make notes uh, be the ability to, to to join the class anywhere you are be it if you're in work, if you're busy, if, you know, if you have certain adult responsibilities that you still had the opportunity to sit in that class and benefit from it there wasn't a time where I thought um, I wasn't going to make it out of this yeah. and there wasn't a time I thought that this wasn't for me I felt very much after the first class this is this is for me this is where I belong and I'm so happy that thank I made you, that decision you. thank you very much Akash for choosing CTS College first of all for interacting in our classes and for always being an ambassador for your students and for your colleagues as well once again congratulations on thank completing you so your MBA program we look forward to seeing you on our I wish graduation I found ceremony. You all sooner. Yeah. I wish I found you all soon. I know everything on my um social media algorithm uh, is CTS. Yeah, CTS. If it's, not, if it's not you all, is Suvir or something. Yeah. Not CTS. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. That's good to hear. We look forward to having you or seeing you on our graduation ceremony this year. Exciting. And hopefully at more events, which we plan to have. Perfect. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Man. Thank you very much, Thank Ashish. you so much. Thank you.